Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Monday, the 20th of January, 2020, the 23rd of Tevet, 5780. Hope you're doing well in your part of the, uh, your part of the world. Coming to you from Gush Etzion, Israel, where it's been raining now nonstop, basically for three, four days. We love the rain. We appreciate it. The Kinneret, the Lake of Galilee, is going up. People need to drive a little safer in these conditions. That's the only downside uh, for all this rain or the traffic accidents here, unfortunately. we got to get a control over that. But that's for a different uh, day. We have a very special guest on the show. He is sitting here right next to me, Maurice Hirsch, the head of legal strategies for Palestinian Media Watch, an amazing organization that does unbelievable work. They translate what is being said in the Palestinian Authority media, what is being said on Hamas television, and they simply bring it to you in a language you understand, whether it's in English or in Hebrew. You can ignore everything that they're saying in terms of commentary. I mean, it's great commentary, but to understand really where things are in terms of the minds of our so-called peace partners, all you have to do is listen to what they're saying to their own people in Arabic. It's that simple, folks. They're not saying it on CNN, but they're saying it to their own people and citing to violence and so much more. And here is their latest press release, uh, especially relevant today, as 40 leaders from around the world are gathering in Jerusalem this week to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. I mean, you're talking about Vice President Pence. You're talking about heads of state, kings, queens, you name it, they're coming to Jerusalem this week. Uh, however, as all this is going on, Palestinian Media Watch came out with uh, uh, a, uh, a press release yesterday indicating that a columnist for the Palestinian Authority-controlled Al-Hayat Al-Jadida, uh, the PA official paper, wrote yesterday that, quote, one shot will disrupt the ceremony and one dead body will cancel the ceremony. In other words, he is calling for murder I don't know who of one of these elected officials, who is he calling for murder of um, during this 75th anniversary liberation of Auschwitz ceremony? That's all the background. So Maurice Hirsch here, head of legal strategies, PMW. Maurice, this guy's calling for murder. I mean, is he threatening heads of state? Uh, he's calling, obviously, for uh, violence and riots and chaos when we have uh, this huge gathering here in Jerusalem, on top of all of that, on a date to commemorate the Holocaust. Hi, Josh. So really what we are seeing, it's not only the bulletin that we put out yesterday and the press release that we put out yesterday. It's been a systematic call for violence over the last week, week and a half. Palestinian leaders using their euphemistic terms of use all forms of resistance. Resistance for them includes people stabbing people, uh, innocent Jews walking along the road. Um, They've uh, renewed and intensified their oldest libel on the books that the Jews are trying to dig underneath the Temple Mount in order to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Every card that they can play to try and incite violence, they are bringing in over the last period of time. It's a good question that you ask whether they're calling for the murder of one of the heads of state or whether they're just calling for the murder of another Jew. This is a question that we don't necessarily know to answer, but we can say that it appears that the Palestinian Authority is 100% trying to incite violence in order to disrupt the, the, the Holocaust Memorial Ceremony. And at the same time, you have actually Holocaust denial, in a sense, uh, before calling for murder. Rabbah, this is the one who wrote the article, criticized the international community for recognizing that the Jews' Holocaust is terrible. He's saying that the world community should not recognize the Holocaust, essentially saying it was no big deal. Well, for the Palestinian Authority, the, the Holocaust really isn't a big deal. Um, Mahmoud Abbas has his doctorate in Holocaust denial. Every day, um, it's a subject that is current. School books are complete. The Palestinian school books completely ignore the idea of, of the Holocaust. They teach nothing about it. The Palestinian rhetoric continuously talks about the genocide and compares the genocide of the Palestinians to the, to the Holocaust. Just uh, uh, recently, I saw figures for, for Gaza, where in the last 20 years, the, the population has doubled, and yet the Palestinian Authority claims every day that there's a genocide going on in Gaza. Their supporters claim that there's a genocide going on in Gaza. No, nowhere, in no genocide does the population size double. That's just wrong. 
Yeah, you're doing a pretty bad job of genocide if the population is, is doubling. You mentioned it before, you called it a blood libel, and that is uh, essentially what it is. I mean, you had over the weekend, you had one Israeli stabbed uh, in Kirat Arba, which was essentially a miracle. You had uh, an Arab stab a Jew walking there on the uh, road between Kirat Arba and Hebron, the holy city of Hebron, and the knife actually broke. Thank God for that, or who knows, it could have been much, much, much worse. He was injured and taken to a hospital. You had another uh, stabbing attack thwarted. Um, but what, what you have here is you have the Palestinian Authority, the leadership actually calling for, as you mentioned, this protest, the great, is it Fajar pronounced? Uh, Fajar, which urges uh, the Arabs to participate in mass dawn prayers in Jerusalem. You had riots on the Temple Mount. You have attempted attacks in Hebron, I mean, this is, uh, as you said, this this is a blood libel against the Jews. We saw this back in 1929 when the Jews were accused of desecrating the Temple Mount, uh, which led to the massacre in Hebron when 67 Jews were murdered. And you're seeing similar rhetoric here today. I mean, it's pretty uh, pretty frightening, isn't it? It, it? it is very, very frightening because this is something that, that Palestinian children are taught from day one. Their school books teach them that the Jews are trying to undermine the Temple Mount. They know that when the leadership says that the Jews are trying to undermine the Temple Mount, trying to destroy the Temple Mount, that is the call for war. Like in Israel, there's, there's the reserve units, that each reserve unit has its special call sign that they know in time of danger. This is where you have to turn up. If you hear this call sign on the radio, the Palestinians know that the call to war, nothing less than war, because it's really, it's go out and kill as many Jews as possible, is that the Jews are trying to undermine and to destroy the Temple Mount. That's their call for war. Every time they want to use it, every time they want to call for violence, that's the call. That's why Arafat called the 2000 terror war the, the Intifada at Al-Aqsa. The Intifada, the uprising of Al-Aqsa. It had nothing to do with Al-Aqsa. It was his planned idea of terrorism. But if you use that theme of Jews trying to destroy Al-Aqsa, and the Muslims trying to defend Al-Aqsa, that's the call for war. So we, seeing, we, we are seeing, as you mentioned, the upswing in, in uh, incitement, and which leads to violence over the last couple of days or whatnot. Do you know, or have you been in touch with anybody in regard to security measures uh, when it comes to these international leaders coming here? Is there any uh, open concern perhaps uh, for these leaders based on these statements, based on this op-ed in the official PA Daily calling for violence during the Holocaust uh, memorial ceremony. Anything that you know of at this point, anything that you've seen out of uh, PMW or perhaps some of your other sources? So I think that the, the, the security preparations already for the visit of 40 plus world leaders was already very, very, very intensive. Um, that's not, nothing that Israel wanted to see any type of uh, uh, mistakes being made. And, uh, and I think that there really has been some type of, 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 of added measures that have, been, that have been taken in order to ensure that there is no real danger posed to the world leaders. That's something which I think Israel is, is very important for Israel. And, uh, and, and the idea of allowing Palestinian terrorists to, to disrupt the, the, the ceremony is something which is just unbelievable. And at the end of the day, these world leaders are going to get up and go home. And we're here in Israel having to deal with the ramifications of this hate and incitement, um, anti-Semitism uh, on a daily basis coming out of the official uh, PA news outlets. And of course, as you mentioned, also the textbooks, the education, the Internet, uh, the social media, um, the, the leaders, right? Uh, Wikipedia. I saw yesterday this whole story with Siri claiming that uh, Ruby Rivlin was the president of occupied Palestine. Um, what is the last question? What is the scale of the incitement, let's say, compared to other waves of, because we know one thing leads to another, other waves of terror, whether it's the 2015 so-called stabbing intifada. What are you guys seeing over there at, at PMW that the listeners and Israelis here, I mean, I always tell my audience to be vigilant, vigilant, whether you're in Israel or anywhere else around the world, that's just the way it is these days. But anything else that you're seeing that we, we should know about, those of us who actually live here in Israel? So I think there definitely are those people who will be influenced by the call to violence. But what we are also seeing is that this is something which the Palestinian Authority has used possibly too often. 
the people are sick of the Palestinian Authority. They're sick of Mahmoud Abbas. They're sick of all the, 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 the bribery that goes on there. Um, they're, they're sick of funds disappearing, billions of shekels of, of foreign aid going to targets and, and, and to sources that really no one knows what's going on with them. They're sick of Fatah and the calls for violence time and time and time again. They've, I think, understood many Palestinians that this isn't a real danger that's posed by Israel, but rather a political need of, the, the, of Fatah and its leaders to create violence, to create conflict. And so I'm, we're hoping that, 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 that this time the call will again uh, um, fall on deaf ears and, and it won't again spark another wave of violence as we saw in 2015. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, either way, thank God for the idea. Thank God for our security forces who are working 24-7 in order to ensure our safety here in Israel, whether it's the citizens of the state, whether it's the foreign leaders, regardless of who it is here. Uh, I'm confident. I'm not shaking in my boots, uh, regardless of the hate and incitement which is being spewed by the official PA leadership. Maurice Hirsch, Head of Legal Strategies, Palestinian Media Watch. Go check out their important work. All you got to do is uh, Google Palestinian Media Watch or go, what's the website, Maurice? Palwatch.org. Palwatch.org. And Maurice does a lot of other amazing work as well, making sure that the the bad guys uh, uh, are put where they belong, those who have carried out heinous crimes against Israelis, Jews, and the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Maurice, have a great day. Let's hope for quiet and uh, let's have a great Nice rainy week ahead. Let's hope the rain keeps falling here. It's a true true blessing here in the land of Israel, but thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Josh, to you and to your listeners. We'll be right back with everything else going on, and we'll get more into this whole situation uh, of the Temple Mount and the blood libel, which is taking place here in the year 2020. All the other news here in Israel and the Middle East. My name is Josh Haston. This is Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com for Monday the 20th of January. We're going to take a short break. Come right back with all the news. Don't go anywhere. I call for a vote. I'm not voting for her. Only an idiot would vote for me. Well, I didn't vote for you. Who cares about this stupid election? In this much sugar in you should know who to vote for. What's going on behind the scenes? As Israelis prepare to go to the polls, tune in to Inside Israel Today on the Land of Israel Network on thelandofisrael.com for all the action as it happens. If you vote for me, all of your wildest dreams will come true. And we are back, Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com for the 20th of January 2020. Thanks again to Maurice Hirsch from Palestinian Media Watch. If you missed any part of that interview, go back and check out part one of the show. We brought it up before um, just to uh, delve into the situation here. One Israeli was stabbed. Another stabbing was thwarted on Shabbat on Saturday as the Arabs under the Palestinian Authority launching this campaign, which is essentially a blood libel protesting uh, Israeli or Israel's presence or a Jewish presence on the Temple Mount. And, um, you know, nothing has really changed. I mean, this is the same strategy that has been used for a 100 years, and they use it whenever it suits their needs of inciting their fellow residents there under the PA, namely that the Jews are desecrating the Temple Mount and that something must be done. So then you have these waves of attacks. Thank God. Thank God. The 22-year-old, whose name is Moshe Greenblatt, who was stabbed on Saturday on Shabbat in Kiryat Arba, was lightly wounded as the knife broke. And uh, in addition, the terrorist therefore did not or was not able to finish him off or stab anybody else in the area. The terrorist was caught, reported here by Israel National News. Uh, Greenblatt spoke from his hospital bed on Saturday night saying, thank God I feel good. The knife broke and he didn't manage to stab any of the people around me. But uh, as we were talking about with Maurice before, this is a direct correlation between the incitement from the Palestinian Authority 
um, and this attack. This past Friday, police entered the Temple Mount to disperse thousands of Arabs who were demonstrating after the morning prayers, chanting slogans against Israel and the Jews. Referencing here the Battle of uh, Chabar, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in the year 628, when Muslims attacked Jews living in the oasis of Chabar, located 93 miles, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Medina, forcing them to surrender. Jews were permitted to continue living there on the condition that they would give half of their produce to the Muslims. So referencing that, talking about the good old days, essentially, uh, for those uh, Jew-hating uh, Muslims there who turned on their Jewish neighbors back then and did the same thing this Friday by riling up the crowds against Israel and against the Jews, referencing a time when Jews were being persecuted, hoping that that is the case today. Arabs often describing Jews, this is reported by the Jerusalem Post, who have been touring the Temple Mount as extremist settlers who are invading Al-Aqsa. That is the call for war, accusing Jews of invading the Temple Mount, desecrating the Temple Mount. By the way, everyone considered a settler, regardless if you live in Judea and Samaria or anywhere else in the country, and people need to realize that. You are seen, anyone living in Israel, you are seen as a settler. doesn't matter if you are in the heart of Tel Aviv. You are viewed as a settler, an illegal occupying settler. So those who think, think it's all about Bethel and Shiloh and all these other places where Jews live, Jews living in Judea, yeah, crazy concept, right? It's everyone, Haifa, Tel Aviv, Yafo, you're all settlers in the minds of those who seek our destruction. Uh, some good news here. Israel lauds the UK for tightening its grip on Hezbollah. Reported by the J Post, Israel called on the international community to follow Great Britain's example and freeze the assets of Hezbollah's political wing. It also asked countries to recognize both the political and military wings of the Lebanese-based group as terrorist organizations. There is no difference between uh, one branch of Hezbollah and another. And it looks like Great Britain has come to that conclusion and hopefully other countries will as well, because it takes both of those branches in order to make it happen. You need the phony politicians, you need the money rolling in, you need all that stuff to happen, even though those people perhaps aren't actually firing the rockets or digging the tunnels out in the field. Nevertheless, Hezbollah is one big terror organization, and it's about time that everyone joins, as Great Britain did, in recognizing this fact um, so this is some uh, this is some positive news here, with the UK designated Hezbollah, both branches, political and military or terrorist, if you will, uh, as a 100% Iranian sponsored, Iranian proxy terror organization. So the event this week, probably the top story, everything going on here in Jerusalem. As I uh, just left Maurice and drove here into our capital uh, to see most of the center of town blocked off, especially around the hotels surrounding the King David and the David Citadel, all the hotels, the areas blocked off from uh, from park er uh, from people parking their cars and a lot of security and a lot of things happening leading up to the uh, 75th World Holocaust Forum this week with over, what is it, 40, over 40 world leaders, kings and presidents and Vice President Pence and the heads of France, uh, uh, Marcom and, 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 and so many others. Arucheva reports here that the race for hotel rooms has been frantic and everything has been booked. It was first come, first serve. David, the King David lobby, I didn't see it for myself, bedecked with flags of many nations. Yes, French President uh, Macron staying at the King David, Prince Charles staying at the King David, Vladimir Putin staying at the David Citadel, and Vice President Mike Pence, and ironically, Speaker of the House Pelosi at the Crown Plaza Hotel. 
The theme of the event, most importantly, remembering the Holocaust, fight, fighting anti-Semitism, and um, the commem- commemoration of the liberation of Auschwitz, where over 1.1 million uh, people, mainly Jews, were murdered between 1941 and 1945. So some are saying that this is like the one of the biggest, if not the biggest, events on an international platform in Israel's history with so many different heads of states heading here. Traffic is expected to be insane. So if you're planning on being on Jeru- in Jerusalem on Thursday or Wednesday, actually, starting on Wednesday, you might want to make uh, other plans. I certainly do not plan on coming in on Wednesday or Thursday to avoid the madness um, unless somehow I'm able to get an interview with uh, one of the heads of state. It remains to be seen. The circus is over. Switching gears here, Naftali Bennett, defense minister, ordering the IDF to deal with the violent, radical left-wing anarchists. Bennett ordering the IDF and security forces reported here by the Jewish press to issue restraining orders against, this is a weekly occurrence, by the way, these violent anarchists, some of them coming from abroad, some of them are homegrown Israelis who go out into Judea and Samaria and come up to the fences or the outer lying areas of communities on Shabbat and start disturbances. They are ruining Shabbat. They attack soldiers. And Naftali Bennett uh, has said, enough is enough. He would like to issue restraining orders against the leaders. He knows who they are. We know who they are. The circus is over. We will take a hard hand against domestic enemies who damage idea soldiers and state security. So we'll have to see how this plays out practically on the ground. He has, there are a list, there's a list here of some of the, some of the names of those who are carrying out these, these violent attacks against Jewish communities, a group called Anarchists Against the Wall and their supporters and their activists from Israel and abroad who carry out these violent provocations, forcing soldiers to have to get involved, ruining their Shabbat as well. But Naftali Bennett ordering the IDF to use a firm hand to quickly dis- uh, disperse rather the violent demonstrators in order to reduce injuries to soldiers and to keep the peace on Shabbat there in Judea and Samaria. This is a great move. should have been done years ago. Let's see how this is implemented, uh, perhaps even this Friday, as I'm sure as they do every week, these anarchists come out and try to ruin the lives of Jews in Judea. A An explosive balloon hits the Ashdod beach. That's 40 kilometers away, turning here also to the Jewish Press article. Several, uh, numerous rather, suspicious balloon clusters located on Shabbat in Sterot, also in Ashdod, in different areas, police having to come in. These are explosive devices and intending to murder Israeli children. How else do you explain multicolored balloons with explosive devices being flown in? God forbid a kid should touch one of these things, and kids down there are being taught. If you see balloons in the air, this isn't. This doesn't mean the circus is in town. It means that Hamas is trying to murder Israeli children. So we had several reported uh, incidents of these explosive devices devices being attached to balloons over the weekend. Um, Yesterday, there was a mortar shell launched, which fell short, did not land uh, on this side of the security fence surrounding Gaza. But it seems that no matter what Israel does in terms of trying, which I think is insane, trying to negotiate with Hamas, and one of the things they talked about was they would stop these balloons, they would stop their rockets, They can't be trusted, and I don't understand why there are all these rumors of Israel negotiating some uh, long-term baloney ceasefire. We've had about a million ceasefires with Hamas, and it only leads to more and more violence directed against the state of Israel by the terrorists in Gaza, whether it's actually Hamas or any of the other terror groups down there. The Jerusalem Post reports that a secret document from the Iranian government reveals the Iran's regime's efforts to build nuclear weapons go back until at least 2002. A document which was, which was one of several taken by the Mossad on a raid in Tehran in 2018 outlines the proposals of several scientists for a nuclear warhead, which were approved by Iran's, Iran's uh, top nuclear official. The document and blueprints will be the focus of a new report 
by the Friends of Israel initiative, an NGO of several foreign policy experts led by Canadian Prime Minister Stephen, Stephen Harper, who is an amazing guy, proving the military ambitions of Iran's nuclear studies despite official regime statements to the contrary. If these documents are in fact true, this would undermine the JCPOA agreement because before the deal was signed, the International Atomic Energy Agency stated they found zero evidence of the diversion of nuclear material in connection with the possible military dimensions. In other words, Iran lied. If everything here is accurate, the Iranians lied, said they didn't uh, have the intention of creating or building nuclear weapons. They were using them for peaceful purposes only. It reminds me of Sasha Baron Cohen and the dictator, as he cannot get through his speech laughing along the way about how he his country once uh, the fictitious nation of whatever it was, wanting nuclear weapons for nuclear rather energy for peaceful purposes go go and see uh, that uh, at least the, that clip from the movie the dictator if you want to know what i'm talking about if you're not aware of that cultural reference but the iranians and their leadership lying for all these years of course they would like a nuclear weapon they threatened to destroy the great satan uh the united states by the way along with the little saint in israel all the time The Iranian people need to be freed, and those who have the ability should do whatever they can to free the Iranian people from the mullahs in Tehran, from the oppression they are suffering at the hands of an evil regime which guns them down down in the streets uh, on a regular basis. Uh, News here from Ynet. Naftali Bennett, our defense minister, is also very big on talking about What's going on in Area C in Judea and Samaria? Those are the areas which include all of the Jewish residents of Judea and Samaria. A new new report uh, here by Ynet indicates that the Palestinian Authority has planted millions of olive trees in Area C. And what what is their goal? To put facts on the ground. It's all about the laws of farming. um, And it's very complicated. But bottom line is, if you can claim that you have been planting on those areas... For X amount of years, then essentially those lands then belong to you, even if they're state land, even if they're uh, land which cannot, uh, which you cannot identify who the owner is. Essentially, you have a claim, a certain amount of claim, and it's very complicated on those areas. If in fact there are, uh, if you can prove that you've been planting there for, I think it's ten years or X amount of years, but this is an official Palestinian Authority policy to take over strategic swaths of land in Area C so that one day when there are negotiations, and I hope there never are with these evil people, then they'll claim, well, these lands belong to us. And you see these villages popping up all over the place. If you travel out on Route 1 or in the southern Hebron Hills, the illegal villages, PA villages, sometimes Bedouin are involved. They bring in Bedouin using them as pawns and other Uh, families from the Palestinian Authority used as pawns. And now we're talking about the agriculture, the illegal planting of all of these trees. It isn't for their need, their needs of of olives. It is to take over lands. And you should check out the Regavim organization. I used to work for them, uh, documenting that for years, hundreds of new agriculture sites have been popping up, thousands of dunam, uh, falling under the, under the hands of the PA, essentially, roads being built illegally in order to get to these new trees. It's all part of the, the Fayad plan of 2009 to seize Area C, these strategic areas, and try to take over these areas, creating facts on the ground for, God forbid, a future Palestinian state, which is, by the way, has never existed in the history of the world, and, please God, will not ever exist as it would be a mortal threat to the state of Israel. Just finishing with positive news, the Kinneret, the Lake of Galilee, continues to rise. It rose another few centimeters over the last couple of days, and it is a blessing. Truly, it is. It truly is the rain. If only people would drive um, more safely. Another, I just heard another three people killed in car accidents, uh, possibly weather-related, over the last. Uh, the last 24 hours or so here in Israel, just awful. That part is awful. The rain is a blessing. We need to use it as a blessing, and we need to drive 
safely. We need to be safe and uh, and appreciate the rain and uh, adapt to the weather conditions here. So on one hand, it's a blessing. On the other hand, it's caused, unfortunately, loss of life. Let's hope for only good rain, rain of blessing over the next week until we speak again. Please, God, next Monday. My name is Josh Haston. Get in touch with me during the week. Josh at the land of Israel.com on Facebook, Joshua Haston or Josh Haston, Israel Advocacy and Journalism on Twitter at Josh Haston and on Instagram as well. Signing out here for Monday, the 20th of January, 2020, 23rd of Tevet, 5780. Just want to give a shout out to Benjamin Bresky, engineer extraordinaire, for all his work at the Land of Israel Network and Tabitha Epstein for everything she does behind the scenes. Most importantly, between now and when we speak again, please God, next Monday, everyone out there in the wonderful world of ours, be safe. Shalom, shalom from a rainy but beautiful day here in Jerusalem, the capital of the state of Israel and the Jewish people for all eternity. Shalom. You're listening to the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com, broadcasting the truth and beauty.